Hey folks, now this is a video that I genuinely never expected to make, but thanks to the absolute crazy state of the PC components market, here we are. The journey for me starts back on the 1st of September, and NVIDIA's RTX 30 series official launch event video. Now, like a lot of you watching this, I was watching that live, eager to see what the next generation of NVIDIA GPUs would actually look like, after weeks and weeks of leaks, speculation and rumours. And like every NVIDIA press conference that's gone before it, Taken at face value, the cards and graphs looked really good, a huge hit in the right direction after the dumpster fire that was the Turin launch back in 2018. Now for as neat as the launch event actually was, it was essentially just like many of the more trusted leaks had predicted, and that started to get me a little bit worried. You see, there was rumblings about the issues that Nvidia was having getting these new cards fabricated, and everything, without even factoring in the global pandemic, was pointing to stock being like gold dust for these new cards. And then this happened. One of our most popular GPUs is the 70 series. 970, 1070, 2070 were all hugely popular. You're going to love the new RTX 3070. Faster than the 2080 Ti, the Turing Enthusiast GPU priced at $1,200. RTX 3070 is faster than the $1,200 RTX 2080 Ti, starting at $499, available in October. The 3070 is faster than the $1,200 2080 Ti from only $499. Now with those words said, the eBay floodgates opened as owners of high-end 20 series cards flooded online listings desperate to get rid of their now obsolete low-end RTX 2080 Ti's. Now I hope you can sense the sarcasm in my voice here. They were trying desperately to scrape together even a smidgen of their original outlay to be able to attain the multiple magnitudes increase in performance that the new 30 series would surely offer up on launch day, once again retaining their crown as king of the hill. Now you might raise your eyebrows at that, but for a few days at least, that was absolutely the case. And the result of this hysteria for me, was this. The MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 Ti, purchased for under 470 quid. An 11GB, 352-bit behemoth with a respectable boost in clock speed over the 2080 Ti Founders Edition spec, offering up over 15 FP32 teraflops and a beautifully overbuilt triple slot cooler, a true pinnacle of the Turing generation. Now we all know what happened next, the RTX 3080 and 3090 launched at the end of September with little to no stock, and the 3070 launched a few weeks later again with little to no stock. And going into December 2020, well there's still little to no stock. That means that low low prices for the once bargain bucket 2080 Ti are simply no more, shooting up past the RTX 3080's MSRP in some places. As the markets kind of realise the idea of obtaining a 30 series card in time for the holiday season is less likely than a democratic election in 2020 being concluded without a hitch. Hopes were pinned on a resurgent AMD, but due to high demand when the RX 6800 series launched in mid-November, stock quickly disappeared there too. Nvidia did however do a cheeky little restock on their official UK website about an hour after the AMD cards were sold out on launch day, and for about an hour, you could actually buy a Founders Edition RTX 3070 for the £469 MSRP. So once again I pulled the trigger, so now I find myself in the position where I've got a 2080 Ti and an RTX 3070 which for all intents and purposes cost exactly the same. So with cost completely cancelled out in the resulting equation, the one question that I can ask is which one is the better card, and does Jensen's killer quote which set this whole journey in motion actually hold any water in the real world? Well, I say real world, that's simply because of the fact that the vast majority of RTX 20 series cards sold are not the FE models which you're going to see compared in all of Nvidia's slides. AIB models from the likes of EVGA, MSI, Gigabyte etc account for the vast majority of cards out there. So let's get the game comparisons out of the way first. 
All these were running my overclock Ryzen 7 3700X system, which being a rather nice piece of silicon can be locked at all core at 4.4GHz daily, 4.5GHz on a chilly day. It's got 32GB of DDR4 3600CL16 memory running in dual channel and with 4 DIMMs acting as dual rank and all games were tested at 1440p, which is simply my monitor's native resolution. We'll kick things off with Watch Dogs Legion, on the Ultra preset with RT off. And we can see that the 2080 Ti takes this one by the slimmest of margins. I say takes it, but realistically, the experience here is exactly the same. We're talking a couple of FPS on average. Moving on to another new title, Godfall on the epic quality setting, and it swings in the favour of the 3070 this time. Again though, everything is pretty much identical. Going back in time a bit and trying Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the highest quality preset, we see a 5 FPS swing in favour of the 2080 Ti, but again at frame rates this high, it's not going to make a difference to your gaming experience. Horizon Zero Dawn, we see a swing in the opposite direction, the 3070 takes it by 6 FPS on average, but again, the difference between 90 and 96 FPS, it's split in hairs. Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Ultra preset, and I had to double check this one multiple times because it was pretty much identical, 63 FPS on average with the 2080 Ti, offering a 1 FPS advantage when it comes to 1% lows. Trying out the previous Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and it's a similar story. The 2080 Ti takes it slightly, but again, we're splitting hairs. Now, if we average up all these results, well, we're pretty much left with exactly the same figures. These two cards perform nigh on identically. Now, I'm sure if we were to retest at 4K, or with super resolution high texture packs, then the 11 gigs of VRAM on the 2080 Ti would start to come into its own, and the lead would be stretched out there. Likewise, I would also expect the 2080 Ti to pull ahead slightly if I was using a slightly faster CPU than the overclocked Ryzen 3000 8 core. But in typical 2020 fashion, the new Ryzen 5000 series, they're as rare as a new GPU. So the 3700X is going to be in service for a little bit longer. Now if you're wondering about ray tracing, well again it's pretty similar across the board. There was no huge jumps in ray tracing performance with the 30 series relative to its rasterization performance, and that means if it draws level with the 2080 Ti in rasterization, then it's the same story when hybrid rendering is involved. So in this case we've got two cards, price wise the same, performance wise the same. So the question I really need to be asking is which one should I be keeping? So let's break it down by the actual cards themselves. The MSI Gaming X Trio is quieter, the whopping 3 slot design and triple fan setup means the 2080 Ti is sitting in the mid 60s under heavy load at over 2GHz and overall it's a cracking looking card. The Gaming X Trio also has nice RGB implementation and it looks so good in action, with a nice metal backplate to boot. You also obviously get that 11 gigs of VRAM compared to 8 on the Ampere card, and with the 352 bit bus compared to the 256 bit bus on the 3070, we get a resulting bandwidth of 616 gigabytes per second compared to 448. The downside of the card is the sheer size, and that's going to mean that the case use in future is going to be a bit more limited, and you need two 8-pin PCIe power connectors along with an additional 6-pin, meaning that cable management with this card is always going to be a little bit more of a hassle. In the 3070's favour though, the fact that it performs on par with the Gaming X Trio 2080 Ti despite being crammed into a true dual slot design, it has to be lauded. Sure, it's a little bit louder and it runs a little bit hotter, but there's nothing thermally or acoustically that I would consider concerning in the slightest. Now the 3070 takes an 8-pin PCIe power connector via an adapter dongle to hook up to the proprietary NVIDIA 12-pin power connector, which is an absolute hassle, but the fact that from your PSU it just requires one 8-pin PCIe power connector means that cable management is going to be easier, and coupled with the smaller size of the card, means it's going to be a much more versatile card on the whole. Looks wise, I think that the FE card, it looks amazing. It's so simple, well built, and premium looking, 
While I would like the option of some kind of illumination on the shroud, and at nearly 500 quid it really should have some sort of illumination on the shroud, but it's not that much of a deal breaker. And the smaller footprint of the card, it means that the rest of the lighting in your system gets a chance to stand out. If you though are swaying between making a similar decision, then my only advice to you is just get whichever is cheapest. I use 28 Ti on eBay that are available, but they're at quite a high price these days. Likewise, there are some 3070s on eBay, and while those will be marked up above the MSRP, just remember that once the AIB cards finally hit the stores in earnest, well, the likelihood of getting any of those close to Nvidia's $499 asking price, it's just not going to happen. In light of that, if you see something online that is maybe slightly marked up, you're probably not going to get it cheaper, even when the cards are more in stock and more readily available. Sure, both cards in the world today are much higher priced than what I paid for. All things considered, I do feel that your best chance of getting that $499 card or £469 card these days is going to be being vigilant and continually checking Founders Edition stock on the Nvidia website. And for that reason, I'm leaning towards keeping the 3070. Well, that and it's going to be facing some stiff direct competition from this. The Radeon RX 6800, but that's a whole other topic for another day. But which one would you pick? The Game and X Trio or the Founders Edition? Or probably what the better question would be is which one can you pick? How's availability looking where you're at, used or new? And I know it's so frustrating when you see these videos and you just want to pull the trigger, but hopefully as we head into 2021 and the product stack from both AMD and Nvidia starts to fill out with lower end SKUs, supply will finally start to catch up with demand. The upcoming 3060 Ti for example, which can use the dies which didn't make the grade for the 3070, from what I've heard that card is going to be much more readily available than any of the 30 series cars that came before it. Likewise, the rumblings with the RX 6700 series seem to suggest a similar thing. But hey, I'm going to leave it there for today folks, remember to let me know your thoughts, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.